Hi, welcome back. In the last video we prepared this beautiful view here. Now let's fill it with some life. What I want to do in this video is I want to enable a user to post something. That'll be the first step. So in order to do this, we need a post model or a post model. The first step is to actually create the model. So in my workspace, I, I'm in my console here and I'll do this again with the PHP artisan command we already used in an earlier video. And what I'm doing here is I'm running the PHP artisan make model command and I want to make a model with the name post. This will, if you remember, then also relate to a database table uh, called posts, so plural. And to create the migra migration of this database table, I'm entering hyphen M at the end to yeah, create this migration file. So now I hit enter. And now you can see in my migrations folder here, I got this create posts table. Now in this table, we already got the ID and the timestamps field. Now what I want to have for my posts too is I want to have like a text where I store the, um, the body of the post, so to say. And I also want to store an integer and here the field will be the user ID. So which post the user created this post. So that's all. We have a very simple post model because all we have is really uh, a body. We have no title or tags or anything like this. So this is enough. So that's all. I do not need any more. But in my but in my post model PHP file under app the post file here, what I will do is set up the relation to the user. Now we haven't talked about relations yet. You are aware that our models in Laravel have kind of a connection to a database table in the background. We already learned that. Now database tables have relations and connections, right? So we have to have a possibility to depict that relation in our PHP file. So in the code we write so that we can access these relations because like we can create a user really simple through our user model, we might also want to attach a post to a user. Now, to be able to do that, we need some chance of accessing this relation. Therefore, we have to define those relations in our model files. And you'll see how this works. In my post file here, in the post model, I will create a new function, a public function, which I will call user because each post has one user who created it. This will take no argument, but it will return something. And what it is, what it will return is kind of a query builder. So this will return this and then I describe the relation. In this case, a post belongs to one user. So this is a belongs to relation. And here I have to provide a string as an argument and in the string I describe the path to the model to which this post model belongs. So the user model in this case. And the path is app backslash, this is important, use a backslash here, user. So this means, okay, the relation out of the view or from the view of a post is that this post belongs to something, to a user. Now obviously we are going to define the inverse in the user model. Here I'm also creating a function which I will call um, posts because one user can have several posts, not only one. And here I'm also returning something. I'm returning this and now it's not belongs to because the user does not belong to the post and the relation is more like one user has many posts or can have many posts. Therefore, what we need is this has many, which means it can have several of those models we're specifying here. So this is app post then. So I hope that's clear how you set up these relations that you're defining how models are connected. So in order to actually create a post, what I will do is I will create a new controller here which I will call post controller. 
And I'm just copying the start of my user controller file here. We'll rename this to post controller though. Here I will use the, uh, the post method. I will need the request, but the office said is probably not something I'll need. And in here, uh, in this video, we're only creating the logic to create a post. Therefore, I'm creating a public function post create post. This will be the action or the function we will call through our route. Now here we will get a request variable and inside of this function what we will do is we will need some validation here but that will be uh, done in a future video. I'll just start with creating the post here and to do this I will create a new post. So a new post and this post has a body which I can find in my request and I'll name that body that field. Let's see in my dashboard here I, I called it new post. Now I like body mare more. Mare German. So yeah that should be called body and in my post controller this will retrieve that value and store it in my body field, which I created here as a text. Now, in order to save our post, we need our user because we need to create that connection, right? Now, we do this by accessing our user through our request. We can always access the authenticated user through the request we're injecting into this function here. So we can access the user there. And you remember we set up this posts relation in our user model. Now we can call this relation here like a function because, well, it is a function. We set it up as a function. And what this function will do is it will return us this connection so that we can now call the save method on this and pass the post as an argument. Now this will save our post as a related post to the currently authenticated user. And after that, I want to return a redirect to the dashboard route. Now, let me run my migrations so that we got our tables created. Okay. So now, in order for that to work, I need to create a new route here. The route which will get called when we click on the submit button. This will be a post route and I will call it create post or I will give it a URL of create post and this will use the post controller at post create post method there. I will call it um, or I will give it a name of create or let's say post create. Okay, now in my dashboard here, I want to include my hidden value uh, input field here to pass my, my session token. So be sure to think of, think of that, otherwise you'll get nasty errors. And well, you will be, a uh, name will be name will be token. Now here I will execute a route and the route we just created post create. Now also add method post here and now let me see if that works. Let me refresh this page here and enter something. Well we didn't get an error. Now let's have a look into our database. So if we have a look here at our post table, we see that this new post was created and attached to a user with the ID 4. And if we have a look at this, this is indeed the user I'm logged in with currently. So now this is working. This is how we create posts and how we attach them to a user in Laravel. And now in the next video, we will give this a little bit of fine tuning with validation and so on. See you there. Bye.